and seeing if I can do this corner, because I really <laughs> Speaking of not being able to do this corner, ch check that- <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> it's just- Look at him! Hello gamers, welcome back to the Armbar Arcade and welcome back to our complete series on Gran Turismo Sport GT League and today we're driving the Audi TTS Coupe uh, for the very simple reason, uh, today's races are in the Tourist Trophy which is a one make series for the Audi TTS so we literally can't drive anything else so um, well I guess that makes that fairly simple then let's do it to it! So right away we're straight into it in race one of the Tourist Trophy here at the Northern Isle Speedway Night it's totally not the Bristol Night Race Honestly, it's giving me big vibes of it though. So, um, uh, interesting story about this. I wasn't originally going to include the One Make series in this uh, complete series. I was just going to do them in my spare time and move on because I thought, well, you know, all One Make of car, you can't really do that kind of search around for a car that's normally a lot slower than everyone. Normally a lot slower than everyone. Um, <laughs> normally a lot slower than the terrible AI because uh, it's a One Make field, so it should be kind of a cakewalk really. But when I did the Mazda Roadster Cup in the beginner league, I actually had some really good races. I, I knocked the horsepower down a little bit on my car to give myself a little bit of a disadvantage. And it led some really good races. I finished one of them three by three, side by side across the line in a photo finish. It was amazing. It's like being at Talladega in the, uh, in the nearly called it the Spring Cup. It's not, it's the, the Minx now, the Monster Energy NASCAR Premier League Cup Series of, of Flange. So anyway, we are now in the Audi Monster Energy Cup Series. And we're going around the outside of everyone. And there's something very interesting about this series. In my kind of preliminary testing for this series, I noticed two things. Number one, the AI is very strange. I mean, that's true for the rest of Gran Turismo. The AI in this game has a weird tendency to go... to be really rubbish most of the time. And then suddenly, when you get near them, sometimes a switch will flip, and they suddenly become the greatest racing driver known to man. Or at least they think they are. It's like 90% of the time, they're UGE Day, and then when you approach them, they suddenly have a stars in their eyes moment and believe they're Max Verstappen. When they're normally not. But in this series, it was really weird. I'd like get up to third place fairly easily, and then the top two would just suddenly be like, Haha, we are now slightly faster than you. What are you going to do about it? And I was like, I, I don't know. You've arbitrarily just become faster than me. So it was a bit weird. So I've, I haven't gone full downgrade this time around. I've knocked the, the power down from... It was 305 horsepower to start with. It's now down to about 200 and... 75 I think or maybe more than that uh, maybe down to 250 uh, I haven't added any ballast weight but I have put on medium tires to compensate for the lack of power and as you can see we're six laps in and we're already up to third but um, like I say it'd be interesting to see if what happened before with the AI happens again whether they suddenly get good um, and the other thing about this series the other reason why I wanted to do this series we're on the high side for second place look at you there look at you there and your bright pink Audi that's quite a nice- oh, hang on, here we go. Oh my god! I've just rammed him into the wall, I've just dumped a fool into the wall. I've just done a bump and run. We are definitely at faux Bristol now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the other reason I wanted to do this series is because it's got quite an interesting little selection of tracks. You've got this oval, which is my favourite oval in the game because I always like short tracks in NASCAR and this is one of them. Uh, the middle track is Dragon Trail. Dude, you're not Carl Larson, can you not? Look at this idiot. Look at this blithering idiot. You know when I said the AI convinced themselves they're Max Verstappen? Clearly this guy, Garrett, Ian Garrett, is now doing his Carl Larson impression and it's failed miserably. So now we've let Pellegrino through into second place. Didn't he used to manage Manchester City? I don't know, but now the former Man City boss is in front of us and uh, now he's not. Oh my god, now look at this guy! You see what I mean? This Garrett is now demonstrating what I was just talking about. You, you, you'll, you'll get past the AI and suddenly a switch will flip and they'll believe they're, ma they're like a god-tier driver, when they're not, as you can see, oh, down on the inside, we're somehow in defending from Garrett's, like, blithering driving, we've suddenly gone through to the lead, I, best the be I guess the best form of defence is attack, so we are attacking hard, you can see Garrett's behind us again, it's like, it, it's, it's a very weird thing, because it's not like they're actually any good at driving, it's not like they actually improve, they, they, they try and overtake you and then just sort of blither up the inside, so they're not really, they're not actually Max Verstappen, because as much as I don't like Max Verstappen, at least he, he drives aggressively and normally has the talent and the chops to pull it off. Whereas this guy is kind of like a sub-level British turret. What are you doing? Look at this pleb. Look at him. Oh, we've just died to the inside, though. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! You weren't anticipating that, were you? We just Mick a Hackenden, you... Hackenden... We just Mick a Hackenden, you fool. That was a bit of a mouthful. Anyway. 
We'll be coming around to, what, about three laps to go at the line this time. And uh, now we've got... Oh, God, now we're understeering a little bit. Just grazed the wall a little bit off turn four. Three laps to go. And hopefully this lap traffic might do us a favour, because Garrett, on his own, Garrett's suddenly really fast. But, like I say, it's not like he's driving any better. It's like his car suddenly gains about 100 horsepower. But uh, he can't deal with lap traffic, though. Look at him. He's bogged down behind those cars. Oh, we are sliding hard. Our little Audi TT, powered by slightly less horsepower than everyone else. What it lacks in horsepower, it makes up for in uh, guts and determination and ability to lap. Now look at him! Look at him! He's just powering down the back straight. It's like he's qu quickly ran over and swapped in one of those Audi R10 engines. It's like he suddenly run over and gone, I'm driving an Audi, can I get the V10 out of the R8? Can I get one of those, plus? And they're like, yeah, sure, here you go. Just throws it onto him and he just lobs it in the engine bay. But this is the final lap. Through turn three and four for the final time. He's dive bombing the lap guy. He's going to try. He is going to try. He's hung with us. But it's not going to be enough. We take our first victory in the Tourist Trophy. And well, I tell you what. I tell you what. There was me saying that uh, I thought the One Make series would be kind of boring given how we're all in equal machinery. Well, the AI in Gran Turismo is kind of like Animal Farm. All AI drivers are born equal. Some are more equal than others. Some are more aggressive than others. Some are less talented than us. <laughs> but fair play to you, Garrett. I salute you, Mr. Anonymous Man, who was just sort of poodling around and then suddenly saw me and decided beating me was the most important thing in his life. I hope I've made you a better driver as a result. But anyway, we will collect our prize winnings and everything and move on to race two. Here we go then for race two of the Tourist Trophy. One final sip of tea. Yep, I've got a cup of tea here in the cup holder in the Audi. Luckily, I was just finishing off, else it would go all in my lap at the first corner. We're underway in race two at Dragon Trail. This is the reverse, as you can see. Feels like we've been at this track a lot. And, um, is that, is that Garrett again? No, it's D Mora. Well, you better get some Mora talent. Um, <laughs> just leave, Adam. Leave. Really. Really, like... <laughs> I have some people, namely one of my best friends who's not a wrestling fan, who tells me I make far too many niche wrestling references in the videos. Would you prefer those over the standard of bad jokes I have? Would you, honestly, would you prefer that? Anyway, we are already moving up through the field. You can't do this corner. <laughs> bouncing off the armco, bouncing off the walls. And we are charging through, making our way up. We've got 22 seconds to make up to the leader this time. So I have strapped some soft tires on this time. I was running mediums for the first race. You are, might as well be running no tyres at all, mate, you absolute pleb. Um, see, at the moment, all the AI drivers are at the UGE day setting. But at any point, any point in any given race, they could suddenly flick a switch and go into Max Verstappen mode. It's kind of like the boost mode in old Burnout games. You remember in, like, Burnout 2, you couldn't use the boost whenever you wanted. You have to fill up the boost meter first. What are you doing? Oh, my God, he's filled up the sped box meter. <sighs> That was a bit of that was a bit of a brown trousers moment, but we're okay. We're just sort of making up our own route around the track now. It seems to be working. We're up to ninth already. How can we go past Oliver Neumann for eighth place? You're just you're just terrible, mate. Retire immediately. But yeah, I am running soft tires for this race because uh, where it's a lot more open and out in the open, we'd be down on horsepower. I thought we may as well make up that disadvantage with some uh, slightly softer rubber. For now. Um Anyway, let's just avoid the innuendos that are just sitting there. I'm not even going to look at them. I'm just going to get on with passing this pain train a load of cars and seeing if I can do this corner because I really <laughs> Speaking of not being able to do this corner, just check that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's just. Look at him! Loser! Loser! <laughs> so I'm not even looking. Not even looking at this guy I'm racing side by side with because I'm so distracted by the blithering incompetence of the guys behind. Maybe he tried to activate Max Verstappen mode way too early. It's like, oh no, I've not filled my boost meter yet. <laughs> just, I love the way you just rejoined, like, sorry, excuse me. Just got turned around by someone else. Oh dear, brilliant. Anyway, <laughs> the, the, yeah, Gran Turismo AI, man, I have no idea. Sometimes I really don't like them because I think they're, they're almost too adaptive to the player. And sometimes I just want them just to be at a consistent level and really challenge me. Just like, if I set you to like maximum difficulty, just stick to maximum difficulty. Don't be like, oh, no, no, you've, well, you've got a slightly slower car. Oh, my. Ow. Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe stop trying to give your critiques of the AI, AJ. Not when you're full on sideways about 100 miles an hour into a bus stop chicane. That is not normally how I enter bus stops. 
normally enter them drunk at two in the morning. Uh, <laughs> night bus stops, anyway. Day buses, I just get on and go, I hate humanity. I hate everyone. <laughs> That's the thing about, that ruins most public transport. People. I hate, I don't like people. People just sort of exist and, and they ruin my day. There's some, like, law of averages dictates that there's some good people. There's some alright ones I can stand. And, oh my god, then, well, there's, law of averages also dictates there's some really untalented people. As well, like you. But, um, what's interesting is this time I've caught the leader up a lot faster than I did in any of my test races, so... Now let's see what Maninun has to, has to say. What has he got for us? Has he been able to flick Max Verstappen mode on yet? Maybe they get to a certain point in the race and suddenly be like, and now we can activate our talent. Talent, you know, in inverted commas. In massive sarcastic. Oh, cone! Cone! Yay! <laughs> I'm like a sort of puppy with a squeaky toy. Look, look, AJ, there's a cone. There's a cone. Oh, cone! Yay! Oh, cone! Oops. Oh, someone's already knocked the cone off that apex. Uh, but now... Can't be distracted by cones now. We're up behind the leader, V Maninen. What have you got to save yourself, sir? What have you got to save yourself? What are you saying? What are you saying? Well, I know what I'm saying. I'm going to risk a sip of tea down the straightaway. Mm. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at, look, at, look at you, mate. Look at you. You're pooing yourself. You're pooing your pants while I'm just chilling behind you, sipping tea, waiting for a moment to pass. Can you stop braking now? Can you stop it? Can you accelerate now? Can you accelerate now? Just spend the whole final lap just behind him like, Hello, hello, I'm here. Hello, hello, I'm here. This is this is the <laughs> this is peak R racing evolution now. It's like if this was R racing, his like stress bar above him would just be like snapping in half and exploding. It'd be a small mushroom cloud. Now, can he do this corner? Nope. Well, that's one apex. He hit that apex, and he didn't hit the wall. Hey, well done. Fair play to you. Fair fox to you. That wasn't too bad. Um. Oh, and oh, and oh, mate. How embarrassed are you? How get embarrassed? Get embarrassed. I should probably break before I get embarrassed myself. Now we are- oh god, and he's- oh Christ, right, okay. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens. We've got half a lap to go, we're in the lead. Let's see, has he filled his Max Verstappen meter yet? I think he- well, obviously he's got more horsepower in us in a straight line, that's to be expected. So back he comes, now he's tucking in behind, here we go. Here we go, we're actually gonna get a, a decent back and forth battle with the AI- no. <laughs> no we're not. <laughs> no we're not. Because he just cacked his pants going into that corner and went, No! Christ! I'm not doing that! <laughs> so we get two seconds on him in one corner. Blimey Charlie. But, uh, so we should be clear of him now. This should be good to go to the end of the race. That's assuming we don't miss every apex going as well. And it, oh, he's still there though. He's going to try and stick with us. And remember, we've got that long run to the line down the finishing straightaway. Now, is it straight away or is it straight? Uh, people, leave in the comments below, because me and my mate have this really long-running argument. He keeps mocking me for using the term straight away. He seems to think it's an Americanism, but I've heard British commentators use the term straight away as well to refer to a straight on a racetrack. Can you, let's just answer this once and for all. Because I'll tell you what is not in doubt, what does not need answering in the comments. It's Manning's lack of talent and whether I'm going to win this race or not, because I have. I mean, it's just destruction, devastation. No matter what the AI tried to pull out of their metaphorical asses, just didn't work this time. And we sweep to our second win of the TT Tourist Trophy, TT of tt -ness. That's the actual name of the series. If you look at the, uh, at the rulebook and the documentation, that's the exact name of the series. Uh, so, those two first two races, fairly, uh, fairly easy enough, you know, fairly nice. Um, but I'm just going to take a deep breath and a sip of tea, because... The next track. The next track's the Nordschleife. That I haven't yet driven in this game, except for some quick uh, circuit training mode stuff just before I started recording. And even then, I ran out of time, so I only did around to about halfway around the lap. Pray for me. Pray for me now. Dear Jesus, I know I've never really believed in you much at the moment, or your dad. Um, but, but, uh, please, I'm, I'm praying to you now, uh, please, just make sure I don't die. Please, please, like, protect me, deliver me from evil, deliver me from hell, which I am currently in. I, I've descended down to hell, and that hell is green. And we're also doing it at half eight in the evening. Who thought this was a good idea to run a club race here? 
This is this is not like the Nurburgring 24 hours or anything. This why why are we doing this at half eight in the evening, where it's dark and the sun is in our eyes and this blithering idiot's doing about two miles an hour. It's out the way. I know the Nord's life is terrifying, mate, but there is something called an accelerator. It doesn't get any less terrifying when you're doing it three miles an hour. In fact, it gets even worse because pricks like me drive into the back of you. Um, so we're starting off 26 seconds behind the leader. I'm completely out of practice to this track because I basically haven't driven it since the Gran Turismo 4 days. I didn't really drive it much in GT5 or 6. But in GT4, I drove it a lot because I actually did try and do an almost all A-spec version of the Nürburgring 24-hour Enduro that was in that game until I left it on one night and then had to go stay at a neighbor's house and my dad thought I'd just accidentally left the console on and turn the PlayStation off. Oh my god! Oh my god, what is going on?! Holy... As if this track needed to be more terrifying, there's people who've just piled off all over the place, it's absolute carnage. We've basically turned up at the M25. It is... This is actually realistic. For the Nürburgring, half eight in the evening, read the M25, half eight on a Monday morning. This is what's going on here, but we are up to 12th. We are 26 seconds behind the leader, so we better get a move on here. But, uh, yeah, in GT4 times... Christ, this corner is just full-on poo! More poo! More, more poo! Shooting out of multiple A9, and we're fine. Relax, we're okay. Um, where was I? Where was I before I shat myself? That's a sentence I've not said much in my life. Um, yeah, back in Grand Turismo 4, drove this track a lot. Uh, but I'm kind of out of practice for it. And at a track like this, you kind of need all the practice you can get, and then, even then, you'll still probably not be very good at it. No one will ever be perfect at this track. Get out of the way. You, you certainly won't be perfect at this track, sir. I like the fact that I'm terrified, and I'm pooing myself, and yet I'm still finding the time to trash talk everyone, including you. Including you, Mr. Suzuki. Yeah, what happened to your team? Garrett put in such a strong showing for you in the first race, now you've just fallen away to mid-table mediocrity. Look at you there. Look at you. Look at you. Just... Awful. How times change. Meanwhile, there's you, who's terrible as well. Um, but yeah, also I am back on medium tyres. I just want to point that out, because I had a feeling that the AI might be as terrible as me at this track, so I decided that I wouldn't need as much of a rubber advantage this time. Yes, rubber advantage is a term that people use, apparently. Or at least I did just then. Let's not dwell on it too much. Let's instead try and not die. Which is basically what happens every time people step on the track at the Nordschleifer. It's like... Like, what's your main objective going into this lap of the Nordschleifer? To get a fast lap time, nail that apex? No. No. To, to finish the lap and and not be dead. And not be dead. And not be dead. And... And not be dead. There we go. <laughs> so we are now closing up to about within 10 seconds of the leader now. So as I suspected, the AI not great at this track, but then again, neither am I. And also, overtaking not very easy here. So, especially in these natural parts here. Especially the parts of the track where it's really narrow, but really fast and not straight. There's barely, ironically to our discussion in the last uh, race, there's barely a single straight away on this entire track. Even the fast bits are all really terrifyingly twisty. So, we are now up in 8th place, and it looks like almost the entire field is in one long train of pain. These two are going side by side in front of us, Bordon and Brower. Well, let's see how this one shakes out. This is a, this is a duel going down into the next corner. And, oh, we had to break there. It got cut off. And we are going to find the chance to pounce as well. Are we, though? Are we, though? Oh, Christ, I've just remembered. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. That's the corner that me and my mate used to call ever tightening. Because that's exactly what it does. You're going around the corner and it's like, okay, it'll start opening out now. And it's like, nope, actually, it's just got even tighter and even tighter and even tighter. And you're in the wall. <laughs> it, just, it just goes on forever. Now, this is, if I remember rightly, one of these flat-out twisty sections. So you really have to keep your foot down, even though it looks like you can't. And so that's one, two, three, four, five. There's about six cars in front of us, and we are seven. So we can just about see the leader. There was a white car in there. We can't see him at the moment. Uh, mate, can you, mate, can you not? Can you, do not make me go to, okay, we're going side by side. We're going side by side down this section. Side by side through here. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, oh, the dive bomb's failed. It's bounced off the wall. Now, what are you doing? Oh my God, you absolute pleb. Borden, you are an absolute burden, a beast of burden upon my life. Oh dear. But anyway, we have just about survived that, uh, that wreck. And we are through into fifth place now. So these two guys in front of us are battling side by side. Sanct and Heath. We go on the outside of both of them. Well, on the outside of Heath. Look at you there. I used to have a PE teacher called Mr. Heath, and he was a git. This is for you. Yeah. Yeah. This has been socking at me when I was terrible at cross country. Oh no. What are you doing? What are you doing? We're going through the carousel, mate. 
do, do, is that really what you do in the most legendary corners in the world of motorsport? You do them at 12 miles an hour? I know you want to appreciate, you want to do some sightseeing, but come on, man. Come on. Get it together, will you? Anyway, I'll get it together for you. And no, God. That is the thing about this track. Like, where the track is so narrow, like, you can be going along really fast and then just drift out a little bit, put a wheel on the grass and, and die a thousand deaths in flames in the depths of hell. There is a reason why they call this track the Green Hell. It is hell on Earth. But also, weirdly, <laughs> mecca for motorsport as well, because motorsport fans and motorsport drivers are kind of masochistic like that. I mean, weirdly, I, d I don't actually think this is the greatest track in the world. I think this is... it's almost too much track. Do you know what I mean? It's too long and too fatal <laughs> and, and too deadly to really be considered great. To me, if this is Stairway to Heaven, Bathurst is Bohemian Rhapsody. It's still long, it's still epic, it still goes through all these different uh, styles, and it has a rocking section near the end. Um, but it's slightly less terrifying, it's slightly more digestible, and it's slightly more fun to race there, I think. And I was always more of a Queen fan than a Led Zeppelin fan, so uh, don't at me. Anyway, we are in third, the fog is starting to descend. Meanwhile, in the fog of war, <laughs> we are now catching up on Ashizawa and the leader, Werner. Presumably not related to Dirk Werner or any of those other German drivers. I swear there was like multiple. Were there multiple guys called Werner or was it just Dirk Werner? I think it was just. I'm getting confused with the guy, although like Dirk Muller and Jorg Muller. That's it. Oh my god. See what I mean? See what I mean? You're like, I'm going the right speed for that corner. Shit, no, I'm not. And suddenly just a gravel trap or a terrifying Armco barrier just veers up to meet you. It's like the track is surrounded by like those tarantulas that kind of stand up on their hind legs and go, and sort of like spit at you or jump on you, and they're just ready to pounce. But uh, we are just about ready to pounce, or we should be. We've got to be, got to get close to the leader here, because we are coming up to the final straight away, and I don't anticipate we'll be going, we'll be, have much of an advantage in terms of speed there, so we need to catch up with this top two. Get a good run through these corners, maybe. Here we go, come on. We're at least in drafting distance. Oh, well, he's going to help us out, and now we've gone off as well. No, car, can you not? We're supposed to be overtaking him, not doing the same cock up that he just did. Right, through on the inside, through on the inside, come on. Oh, dive bomb up the inside. Oh, we've just run him off the track. Actually, that may have backfired a little bit. That may have backfired a little bit. We could have done with using him to draft down the final straightaway, because we're not going to have a top speed advantage here. Although we are gaining a little bit. Gaining. 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 Gaining tiny increments, but we are gaining. And we'll also, if we're even vaguely... We are still gaining a little bit. We must have got such a good run out of there. Oh, my God. Right, okay, I have a strategy. You, go through, go through, go through. Right, now I'm, now I'm going to tuck in behind and draft. Here we go. This is it. This is what I was supposed to do. Here we go. Come on, come on, come on. Go, go. Move for great justice. And don't just get him away. We are drafting, we are drafting, we are drafting. Oh, no. Oh, no, don't close me off, don't close me off. I'm on the outside of you, you... Oh, my God. Oh, my... Oh, my God. No, this has not worked. Uh, ignore the fact I just completely cut the track. Oh my god. Oh, there's the leader. No! Ow! Come on. We're so close. We're so close. Dive bomb city! Dive bomb fuck! Dive bomb fuck! Oh, hang on. We're still on the track here. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I thought for a second that we just fell off and bounced off the wall and were somehow still, like, nearly passing the leader on the. <laughs> Oh my god, well that completely went to, literally went to hell in the final few corners. Our race went straight to hell, but somehow we still finished second and nearly win the final race. Werner, if, can you imagine how pissed off Werner would have been had we won that race? He'd have just been like, like, seriously, this guy was in second by miles behind me. He just cut every single corner. The final four corners may as well have not existed. He bounced off every single wall and he beat me. How is that legit in any way? And to be honest, even I would have to be like, yeah, you've got a point, but um, suck it, I won. <laughs> but unfortunately, I didn't win, but it was still a very fun race to crown off the Tourist Trophy. A nice sort of short and... Short and yeah, let me put my teeth back in. A nice short and sweet series there uh, with the Audi TT. And um, as I said, that was me thinking the one-make race to be a little bit dull. But um, it appears maybe the AI is now stepping up a little bit as we go through the GT League. And not before time as well, it really needs to. So, um... It turns out that um, just handicapping the car a little bit, just taking the horsepower down. There you go. I was on 85% horsepower, 260 horsepower. No weight, uh, no ballast added on medium tyres. It's for quite a fun race. And um, so leave down in the comments below um, your most blatant 
uh, dive bombs, your worst dive bombs for the victory in racing games, the worst moves you've pulled, they can be dumping someone out of the way, crashing someone off, completely cutting a corner, just the moments where you decided you would do whatever it took to win, you would listen to that devil on your shoulder, you'd have to go full stone cold at WrestleMania and, at X7 and just... You were like, fuck my morals, I've got to take a steel chair to the guy, the leader, and I don't know what I'm talking about now, I'm just going to go and, and drink some tea. But um, in the meantime, totally leave all that in the comments. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you are new in the arcade, and we'll see you guys next time in the Arcade. Cheers.